Hello there, it's Kathy with Paper Phenomenon. So let's continue. We're going to finish up this cover by decorating it. And we're going to use the simplest way to decorate an album cover, which is just covering it in pattern paper. And yes, there is a right way and a wrong way to cover your album with pattern paper. More specifically, the spine area, which is the area that we normally are super careful with because we don't want our paper to crack in the spine area. Now I want you to remember that these techniques that I'm showing you are reducing the likelihood of cracking. I cannot guarantee that you will have no cracking. However, I can definitely ensure that it will reduce the likelihood of cracking. All right, I am that confident that this will absolutely help. So the first thing I have done is I've cut my paper down to size. All right, and I wanna talk a little bit about the paper that you cut down to size in the spine area. Depending on how you're covering your album, um, I personally like a wrapped spine, and then I choose a front and back cover, typically different papers. I like to do different papers on the front and the back. Uh, so these are the two papers I chose for the front and the back of my album cover, okay? And I like to cut the front the paper for the front cover matting size so what does that mean a quarter of an inch smaller than the area you are that you want to cover and then for 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 the length a quarter of an inch smaller than the area you're covering right and then for the width i go a half inch smaller not a quarter of an inch okay so i cut my paper down to size and as you can see i'm a half inch from the edge of the chipboard okay that's for the front and the back for the spine, it's a little tricky if you're doing a covered spine. To measure with a ruler, not so easy. So my tip for you guys is, and again, I've been doing this for years. I just normally do my tutorials in a private setting and every once in a while I come on YouTube and do some basic tutorials, kind of like a refresher course, okay? So you wanna use a tape measure for anything that has a rounded uh, edge motif anything around it, try a tape measure. I typically like to go about an inch to an inch and a half in side of, from the edge to, to the cover, right? Inch, inch and a quarter. And then you take that tape, tape measure, you want your album to be in the folded position and you go all the way around to hit an inch and a quarter on the back, all right? On the back side of that. And that's how you get your measurement for your spine. All right, and I've got my measurement here. Now for adhesive, for the front and back cover, you can use tape or glue, no problem. For a wrapped spine, I do not recommend glue. I recommend double-sided tape, all right? And I encourage you all to try my double-sided tape it is fantastic, all right? You can find it a six inch and a three eighth inch roll on paperphenomenon.com, all right? I have this two inch roll that I've had been using forever, which is by Score Tape. Score Tape is also a fantastic brand. My tape is just different. It's a different formula of, of double-sided tape and it is fantastic. All right, so I use score tape because I still have it. And until I am done with it, I will continue using it even though I have my own brand of tape. I need to make room in my drawer, all right? So that's why you see the score tape here. Uh, so what you wanna do is to wrap your spine. You want to start off in this one inch space here, one inch to one and a quarter inch space, depending on what you leave here. That's how much tape you're gonna cover with strips of tape, not a wide formatted tape, right? You want the ability to peel the tape backing off, leaving behind this one inch or one and a quarter inch that you got going on here, all right? So let's do that. So I'm leaving that tape on and just removing the tape from the center area here, okay? Now, what you wanna do is Make sure that you're going in the right direction. I am notorious for gluing things on upside down, all right? So what you want to do is, you wanna place your paper as if you were matting, front and back cover, nice and straight like this. No glue yet, no tape. 
right there. Let's pretend this is on there. Nice and pretty. Nice and straight. And I like to do it with the paper on here because I get a clearer picture. All right, make sure this is going in the right direction. And you're going to overlap by, you know, your one inch, your one and a half inch. I mean, sorry, your one inch, your one and a quarter inch. You can do one and a half inches. It's entirely up to you. It's your book. You can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you what I do. All right. So I'm going to place it. Oh, sorry. I forgot one thing. <laughs> to make sure it's straight. My bad, guys. My bad. I like to draw a line. All right, one inch, one and a quarter, depending on what you're doing on my pattern paper, because that's where I overlap. Okay, and I did a one inch. I'm doing one and an eighth inch because I can't help myself. All right, make sure it's nice and straight. All right, because this is going to set everything off. One inch line. Nice and light. You shouldn't have to erase this line because the paper is going to go right over it. Okay? You shouldn't have to erase it. Okay. So again, as if I were matting, pretend I have glue on there. Alrighty. And then you're going to take this, make sure it's going in the right direction. And you're going to secure it. If you're confident with what you're doing, then you can easily, guys, glue your paper down. I am I'm pretty confident. You can glue your paper down, all right, and be done with it. If you're not, you can take your binding system and attach it and remove this paper, right? Remove this paper and you'll do the following. I'll show you, but I'm good with putting my paper down. Okay. And if I make a mistake, I like to show you a fix. All right. So that's why I'm gluing my paper down because it may not come out perfect your first time around. And many of you have probably seen me wrap my album covers a bazillion times, even here on YouTube. Okay. So this will be a little refresher for you guys. Okay, there you go. So that's on there. So now you're going to take this piece and you're going to place it over that pencil line. Nice and straight. And it should stick on the black portion, right? Not here. Just in case you didn't glue your paper down yet, right? You want to line this up and make sure it's fine. Because what you want to do is you want to sit your album straight up like this. You're going to open that front cover. You want a slight bend in that front cover. I'd love for you to see the spiny system like that. There you go. You're going to open up that front cover. Make sure you don't have any tape overhang top or bottom. And you're going to stick it down. Notice that slight angle. You don't want to stick it down in this position. You want a slight angle. Not too much. If you have too much of an angle, you're going to create bulk here and you're going to get wrinkled. It's going to get wrinkled here in the spine. So you want just a little bit. All right. See that slight angle? What you want to do is create room for the paper to stretch without it buckling. Okay. So now you're going to stick nice and tight around that bend. You're going to stick the paper down. Okay. Like so. Burnish, make sure it sticks there really well. Burnish that into place, guys. Then you're going to do the other side exactly the same. All right. And now you want it to stick around to the other side. All right. So your other side should come past your, that measurement that you did. Now, I cut mine a little bit shorter on purpose because sometimes we screw up, okay? And I just want to show you how to fix it. And it doesn't matter if your front and your back cover are not the same. So it doesn't stick, remember, because we have our paper there, right? So let's pretend this comes all the way over here, 
right? Let's pretend. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that they line up. And if it doesn't line up, then you want to position this paper so that either it does, if it's too much, then I'll show you another fix. Then you just lay this paper down in place. See, mine is lining up just perfectly because I'm pretty, I've done this for a long time. All right. So I'm going to glue mine down. All right, so let's do that. All right, so gluing, gluing, gluing. Make sure I'm going in the right direction. I am. All is well. All right, and the glue gives you time to make sure that you can position your paper properly. Okay? So, let's say you screwed up and you didn't cut it long enough, right? All is fine, guys. So remove your tape backing, right? And because you have coverage here, you can absolutely leave it like that or you can use a piece of paper to bridge it. Very, very simple, guys. But before you do that, remember you want to stand your book up. You want a slight bend and then you stick it down. You don't want to stick it down in that folded position. You need a slight bend in that paper. Okay, slight, slight bend. And now burnish in that spine area. It is important that you burnish, 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 burnish in that spine area. Really rub it in, right? And when you open your book, you open your book, you want to not see any buckling here. See how perfect that is? If you see buckling here, my friends, that's you, that means that you had your album bended way too much, flexed way too much. You just want a little bit of a curve. See that? Just a slight curve. Okay. Now, this is not terrible. This is not the end of the world. But if you hate that, you can always take another piece of paper and bridge it right here, all right? I am not gonna do that because I don't wanna cover up this beautiful image here. I am okay with this on the back cover. But what I will do, because see how thin it is? You don't want this paper coming up, no matter how good your tape is, because there's so much stress on this small bend here that your paper can come up. So you just wanna hit it with a little bit of glue and burnish the heck out of it, just in case, in this folded position like this. Okay, and what I would do, let's say if I didn't have this image here, I would get a piece of cardstock. I'll show you what I'm gonna do in the front. You would do it in the back, except that yours would be bigger. All right, so now I like to put a, now we're gonna remove this tape backing, right? And just so you know, the reason why my paper is shorter is because I measured an inch from the paper and not the inch from here, okay? All right, so you get a piece of cardstock. Let me see if this one's long enough. It is not, so I gotta get a different scrap. Let's see if I have a scrap somewhere around here. You could do cardstock, you could do ribbon, Whatever you want, guys. You could do like a ribbon uh, pleat right here. But I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. And I like to do a border. And in this case, I'm going to do a quarter, uh, about a 3 16th of an inch border the height of my pattern paper right there and then do that. See that how beautiful that looks? Now you can do all sorts of things my friends but 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 this is the simplest and the cleanest way to mat your album.
to cover the to cover your album cover to decorate your album cover right look at that how gorgeous really really beautiful you can add more to this but it's, that's not my jam not my vibe I'm, i have a very clean aesthetic so i tend to leave things like this and if you want to do that you can do this in the back as well all right so let's cut that about that same size the beauty about the front and the back cover is that you can treat them as two front covers so they do not have to be the same all right they do not right then you do that so if your paper is a little bit off you use this piece to try to bridge it so if I'm a little bit off on one side you know I measure from the top of the paper to the very bottom of the longest paper right and that is the size I cut so now if you use a piece of cardstock what you want to do is use glue and put it right in between both papers so that it is absolutely secure all right so this paper won't pop up all right it has some reinforcement there see easy fix guys easy fix absolutely easy peasy and that looks gorgeous just like that love it so what's important here is the technique on wrapping the spine all right leaving this open like so slight angle so that you get uh, a good wrap so that when you close your album you have left some room in the paper so that when you close it it doesn't crack here all right it does not crack that is what's important here all right you can also you know you can do all sorts of things to this but that's not what this this um video is about it's about reducing the likelihood of cracking in your album cover and notice how my cover does not right here in the spine there's no buckling here of the paper no wrinkling or anything of the paper so remember there's that cover close you want it somewhere along like that okay not like this not like this so this is open this is open right this is straight so we're going about I don't know angles so whatever this is <laughs> right whatever this is just like a little just a little bend guys you don't even have to get technical with angles or anything like that just a slight bend all right so there it is my friends that's how you create an album cover you simplest way to cover it with pattern paper but this spine technique is something you may want to adapt if you're having trouble with cracking let me know if you found this little series helpful i would love to know this is kathy with paper phenomenon and until next time